Okay, this sermon's entitled, Abstaining from Evil. I'd like to open up with uh, prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Now turn over to the book of Psalms. Let's open up with Psalm chapter 7. It reads, O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces, while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at, that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy. Now the Bible has a lot to say about evil. Let's, let's go back to the beginning and see what it says. In Genesis chapter number 6, Genesis chapter number 6, it talks about evil. This is right before the flood. And this, this tells you why God even implemented a flood. It's because the world was so chock full of evil that he had to basically de decimate the human race. And of course he provided hope, that's why we have Noah's Ark and that whole account. And that's, that's a picture of salvation as well. But it says in verse uh, 5 of chapter 6, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So the human race was, was so evil that God had to remedy the situation. And um, he did so by bringing upon them the fl a flood. The, you know. And that's why we have um, Noah's Ark, and of course the rainbow comes into play, letting people know that he, he'll never send an, another flood. But my point is, people are wicked, people are evil, and that's why we need to understand what the Bible has to say about this. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 13. This tells us why we need to stay away from evil. Romans chapter 13, and let's take a look at verse 4. I'll start off with verse 1, and then we'll, we'll stop at verse 4. It reads... <clears throat> All right, Romans 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then, be be not, then not be afraid of the power and, okay, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. And look at verse 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So what we see here is that if a person is doing evil, God's wrath will come upon them. Now, we're talking about unsaved people now. Now, if a person is, to is totally full of evil, the Bible even says that he, he won't even come to, to, God, to God for salvation. Now, let's take a look at that verse. We're not talking about being a sinner. Everyone's a sinner. Okay? But when a person is just basically bent on being evil, just wicked to the core, then it makes them not even makes them not even want to come to Christ because Christ is is the light. He's the light of the world. So turn to John chapter three, right 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 after we see John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him be saved. He that believeth on him is not damned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now look at verse nineteen. It talks about evil people. It says, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Now, this is why some people don't, don't get saved. Their deeds are pure evil, and they don't even want to come to the light. Okay, verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. So, darkness and light do not mix. So that's why some people never get saved, is because they, they just love evil. They hate the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, 
that they are wrought in God. Now, understanding that you're a sinner you know, does, not, does not mean you're totally evil. If you understand you're a sinner and, and, and you realize that you're going to hell, the Bible teaches that all, all, all over the place. You're, you're condemned already, as we've already read. And then you come to Christ and believe on him, you're saved forever. You're going to heaven. But see, some people are so evil they would never even want to be saved. And that's a sad thing. So that's, this is telling us some of the dangers of just being totally evil. Now let's take a look at a few verses that um, make it clear um, what's going to happen to evil people. People that never get saved and then they just remain evil. Um, it's not looking good for them. Turn to Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. Let's take a look at a couple verses here. Okay, it reads in verse 19, Also thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. Now look at look what it says in verse 20. Now, this, this verse right here, what, what this is telling me is that television is evil. Television is wicked, and television makes people evil. It corrupts people to the core. Okay, let's look at it. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail. Stop right there. So what this is telling us about evil people is says their eyes, the eyes of the, of the, of the wicked, and wicked is just another word for, for evil, it says shall fail. So what this is telling you is that if you're sitting there putting evil junk in front of your eyes, you're wicked and you're going to fail. That's why we should be reading God's word. God's word is pure. God's word is wholesome. Okay, God's word is life. Okay, we see that in John chapter 6. Go ahead and turn to John chapter 6. This is the solution to this problem, is getting into God's word. John chapter 6, hold your place in Job chapter 11, and let's turn it to John chapter 6. One of the ways to get rid of evil is to get into the word. Okay, let's take a look at verse 63. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they're, they're God's words. So, if you want to get away from evil, you need to get into the word of God. Because this is, this is life. See, evil is associated with death. Evil is associated with, with, with killing, murder, wickedness, vileness, you know, just demonic activity, satanic, you know, things. The words of life are completely oppose evil. So that's why we need we need God's word. So now let's go let's go back to that verse. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape. So evil doers are not going to escape God's wrath. We think of people like Hitler and Stalin, these mass murderers and all these wicked, depraved, reprobate people out there. We think they're just getting they just got away with it. No, they didn't get away with anything. They're burning in hell right now. And people like that terrorist or whatever, they're gonna, they're not going to escape God's wrath. So we don't need to worry about what's going to happen to these people. They're going to get what they deserve. Okay? Now, let's keep reading. And their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. What does that tell you? They have no hope. People that are lost, people that reject God's word, people that reject the grace of God, people that reject salvation, they've got no hope. They've got the hope of giving up the ghost. That means all, the only hope they have is death. So that tells you something about, about evil people right there. Now, let's take a look at a few verses that tell us to stay away from from the appearance of evil not just evil but the appearance of evil okay turn to first Thessalonians chapter um, 5 first Thessalonians chapter 5 we see a whole list of different things here I think about like the word Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth B-I-B-L-E now there are lots of chapters in the scripture where you get basic instructions on how to live Romans chapter 12 is a good example you have all these epistles in the New Testament where they're divided in two different ways number one Ephesians and Colossians are divided the same way the first three chapters in Ephesians tell you all about God's grace the last three chapters tell you how you should respond to God's grace by serving God and abstaining from evil and whatnot. And then Colossians is the same thing. It talks about God's grace. You know, it talks about all our sins have been forgiven in Colossians. And then the latter two chapters, it tells you how you should respond. So what we, what we see are outlines on how to live, how to live the Christian life. This is very important. See, we're saved by grace. And that's why after we're saved, we should be living a Christian life. See, I despise lordship salvation, but I don't because that's damn that's damnable heresy. But I'm I'm all for lordship fellowship, lordship discipleship, Lord making Christ the Lord of your life after you're saved. It's it's, the, it's what the Bible teaches, because you don't have to make him Lord of your life to be saved. That's garbage. 
But to make, making him Lord of your life after you're saved, fighting away sin, fighting away evil and temptation, is, it's, it's biblical. But see, in order to do this, we had to have instructions. So the Bible gives us some instructions here. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it tells us several things to do. Let's start off with verse 14. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. So evil people out there need to be warned. If a person's, you know, a Satanist, if a person's lost, a person's, you know, believing, you know, whatever, some phony religion, they need to be warned that the wrath of God is abiding on them right now until they get saved. So it tells us right there, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, and this could be a, a believer or an unbeliever. There are, there are believers in Christ right now that are actually very evil people, wicked to the core. It's because they're not being taught God's word. It's because they're, they're going their own way. So he's telling us to exhort you know, anyone. Warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil. Now what this is saying is that don't fight, e don't fight fire with fire. Don't render evil for evil. Okay? Unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, okay, both among yourselves and to all men. So the Bible tells us right there, follow that which is good. Okay, if you go back to Philippians, it gives us a whole list of different things that we should be doing and we should, what we should be focused on. And let's go ahead and look at that list. Now, we're not, gonna, we're not done with this, this portion. We're going to continue reading here. But jump back to Philippians chapter 4 and let's look at the list. And everything on this list is the opposite of evil. It says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on those things. This tells us not to be focused on evil things. We shouldn't go read a book about, you know, some, some depraved ev event in history. We shouldn't be reading books about evil people, evil men, evil dictators. We should be focused on the things that are of good report. Okay, verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do in the God of peace shall be with you. So this is an issue of having peace with God. Okay, now turn, turn back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says in verse 16, right after we, you know, verse 15 says, render not evil for evil. Verse 16 says, rejoice evermore. We should be giving God praise that he, that he has saved us. And we should be giving him praise, period. Because that's why he put us here, is number one, to be saved by his grace, and then number two, to serve him in this lifetime and to rejoice. We're, we're put here you know, to worship God. Okay, now, verse 17, pray without ceasing. This is an outline for how, how we should live the Christian life. Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit... Okay, every, every believer has the Holy Spirit inside them. You quench the Holy Spirit by, like, watching TV or doing something, you know, that's totally, you know, risque or totally just off, you know, offbeat, off the wall, listening to some, some garbage music. That would quench the Spirit. A lot of things would quench the Spirit. But he's telling us here not to. Finally, despise not prophesying. Now, this is key. One of the ways to fight off evil or to abstain from evil is to get into the, get into the Word of God and listen to sermons. Despise not prophesying means... It's not talking about a prophecy. It's talking about a, you know, a preacher, sermon. Despise not sermons. Despise not prophesyings. Okay? Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. So he's telling us if something's good, if something's wholesome, we should hold fast to it. Hold fast means hold strong. Okay? Now, finally, abstain from all appearance of evil. So if something appears to be evil, we should abstain from it as well. So this is an outline for how the Christians should live their life. And he, he's making it very clear. It's just basic things. Now, what do we do about evil? Ultimately, what do we do about it is we, um, let's turn back to Romans and I'll tell you. I mean, Christians should hate evil. The Bible talks about that. Let me go ahead and find one verse that makes that clear, that we should hate evil. So hang on one second. Psalm 97 verse 10 tells us, let's back it up one verse, For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. So, God is t the total opposite of evil. Okay? Now, that's why we should be praising God and exalting him. Now, verse 10 says, Ye that love the Lord, and we're commanded to love God. Okay? After we're saved, of course. You can't love God if you're not saved. And that's another issue. Now, people that are lost, they, they love a false god. Okay? They love their own god that they made up. But that's another issue. But, but ye that love the Lord hate evil. Okay, he preserveth the souls of his saints. 
he delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. So the Bible tells us that in order to love God, you must hate evil. So now, let's turn over to Romans chapter 12. Now, the stupid bull's coming up. I already did a sermon against that. It's going to be up pretty soon. And that is pure, wicked, debauched, pure, salacious, salacious evil. And we should absolutely hate that. And I, and I can't preach harder against, against this subject because I, I can't stand this, this, this garbage. And I'm just sick of people condoning it. Okay, we're going to look at a verse that talks about condoning sin, condoning evil. But let's take a look at Romans chapter 12. And let's see what the Bible says, what we're supposed to be doing about evil. The very last verse, be not overcome of evil. So don't let evil overcome you. Now, people that watch that trash, they're letting evil overcome them. They're letting evil take control of them. Okay? And it's, it's a sad thing. Okay? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So the Bible tells us we should overcome evil with good. Instead of watching that smut, we should be reading the Bible. We should be praying. We should be doing biblical things. And I've already touched on that in the, in the other sermon. But now let's take a look at one verse that talks about evil. Isaiah chapter, I believe chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, I believe this verse is in here. Okay, Isaiah chapter 5, it says in verse 20, Woe unto them that call evil good. There are people out there that actually call evil things good. Okay, and, and the Bible says woe unto them. Okay, this is a serious issue. And good evil. So anyone who's going to say that the Super Bowl, or things like that, television, it's okay. The Bible says, woe unto you, you're, you're taking something that's evil and you're deeming it or subsuming it as being good. Now, the word subsumed means to falsely categorize. Okay, That's what it means, and that's exactly what people are doing. So, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Okay, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. So we should be abstaining from evil. We should hate evil. We should fight against evil. And there's a verse I want to. There's another, one more verse I want to look at that tells us about fighting evil. So let me let me go and grab my notes. Hang on one second. All right, turn over to Second Corinthians chapter ten. See, as Christians, we should be fighting evil. All this garbage that takes place in this world. You know, this homosexuality garbage, all this all this junk. And we should be fighting against it. We should hate it. And we should we should fight against atheism. That's straight out of the pits of hell is where that, is, where that comes from. And we should fight all, all forms of evil. Now, it tells us right here that we can fight it off. It says in verse, um, chapter number 10, verse 5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. So anything that's going to come against the knowledge of God is evil. Anything you put in front of God that's not God is, is an idol. And it says in 1 John 5, you know, keep yourselves from idols. Talking about believers. Okay, now let's keep reading. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when, you, when your obedience is fulfilled. So whenever your obedience is fulfilled, you, that's when you can come against all forms of disobedience. So that's what the Bible tells us. It says to revenge. In other words, we can do something about it. We don't have to let this, this, this garbage you know, prevail. We don't have to let Satan win. Okay? Satan is the source of all this evil. And we know there's a hell because of evil. We know, we, we know it exists, and that's why we know evil, evil lost people that are, that are unsaved are going to hell. So let's take a look at one more verse that makes it very clear that you know, evil is in this world. It's it's very extant, and it's it's going to be it's going to be dealt with. You know, in the end, Philippians chapter one, it says in verse twenty eight, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to which is to them an evident token of perdition. Now, perdition means destruction. Perdition is another word for hell. So the fact that we have t terrorists out there, we have people that are God's adversaries lets us know there's a hell. It lets us know that that's what that's what the word token means. The word token means sign or an omen, like a presageful indication or a prognostication. It's, it's telling us that, that this is real. We know there's a there's a hell because the evil doers of this earth 
have made it clear. They've made it an evident, so it's an obvious token of perdition, but to you, a salvation and that of God. So evil is out there. We need to abstain from it because evil is going to corrupt people. And the way we get rid of it, number one, we get into the word of God. We hide it off with God's word. Because God's word is pure, we have to have something pure to get rid of evil. So that's all I have. If a person is not saved who's listening to this, let me just go over the, the plan of salvation real quick because it's necessary that we, we constantly give the gospel out because there's a lot of evil gospels out there. There's a lot of evil messages. You know, good tidings, evil tidings, bad tidings. Well, the good news is that Jesus Christ ultimately defeated evil death, hell, the grave, sin, all of it defeated. He took upon himself the sins of the whole world. Okay? He died he died for every human being alive. And the Bible says he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole. Of course, if you're a Calvinist, your evil is hell and you're wicked and you don't believe in the real God, you believe in an evil God. But the real God of the Bible, you know, Jesus, you know, sent Jesus Christ to die for all sins, everyone, every sinner. And the the Bible says that we need to receive salvation. Salvation's a gift. And salvation is of the Lord. That's why it says, in that of God, to use salvation and that of God. So salvation is what God has done for us. God saves the sinner completely without our help. And the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So it's it's very simple. You believe on Jesus Christ and you're saved forever. John 3.15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Once you believe on Christ, you're saved and you have eternal security. And it's called once saved, always saved. And the reason people don't agree with this teaching is because they think if, you're, if you are once saved, always saved, you'll go out and live an, ev- an evil life. You'll be wicked and you'll just live like the devil. Well, that may be, but if, if you are saved, you're going to be chastised by God. God is your father, and you're his child, and you're going to be disciplined and chastised by God. So that doesn't work. That's just a, a false accusation that people try to rail against the eternal security proponents. But eternal security is 100% true. The Bible says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. It's, it's not temporary life. People that teach this are evil. People that teach you can lose your salvation are wicked as hell. People that teach you can prove you never had it are wicked as hell. People that teach you've got to persevere to the end, they're evil, they're wicked, they're devils, they're demonic, they're reprobates. So yes, there are evil teachings out there that... Or just, just we need to get rid of those as well. We need to abstain from those as well. So, no, salvation is all by grace, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The moment you believe on Christ, you're saved instantaneously. It's not continual or progressive. It's an instantaneous, God saves you once and for all. All your, sin, your sins have been removed. All your sins have been paid for. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. So you're saved forever, going to heaven, and that's what the Bible teaches. But after we're saved, we should be fighting against evil fighting against all the perverted gospels out there, fighting against all these wicked ministers of Satan that are teaching works, salvation, Calvinism, Arminianism, lordship, all that stuff's evil, and then we should fight against you know, the evils of this world as well. You know, People that are pro, pro, pro-choice, they're evil, they're wicked. And we should fight against false religions, and we should fight against anything out there that, that comes against God. Okay, So that's all I have. And we, we overcome evil with good. Because you can't fight fire with fire. So you can't, you can't fight evil with evil. So we have to have God's word, and God's word is, is good. God's word is pure. So that's all I have. That's, that's my exhortation is for people that are saved to get mad about the evil things of this world and to do something about them and not put up with it. So that's all I have. Let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. I just pray that you'll allow people to understand the truth of Ephesians chapter 5 where it says, you know, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. We should be putting those things away. Those things are, are evil, and we should be, um, we should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And I just pray that you'll allow us to put this into effect and help us to grow, help us to continue in our walk and continue to, to share the gospel with people. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.